spoke about, I, I like this chain, you know, a lot. And I hope you like it because this chain, this is the chain of the Quran. And you will be too happy, you know, and celebrate. And it deserve, you know, when make khatam, uh, the sheikh will give you ijaza. And in this ijaza, you have the chain that I read on this sheikh and so and so, sheikh and so and so, all the way to the successor, to the uh, companion, to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to Sayyidina Jibreel, to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. It's very great chain, no doubt about it. But you missed the hidden chain, which is greater and greater, much greater than this. Let's look at this chain, okay? We have this, the group of called al Hawamin. okay? They are seven surah. And we have Surah Al-Zumar before them. Let me, with your permission, put Surah Al-Zumar firstly, which is not Hawamin, okay? But I, I'm going to explain the, its relation to al Hawami. okay? We have Surah Al-Zumar, again, it's not Hawami. And then we have the group of seven, which are al Hawami. start by Surah Al-Ghafir, Fussilat, Shura, uh, Zukhruf, Dukhan, Al-Jafiyah, Al-Ahqaf. Few words here. The first word, all of these seven surahs, they start with what? what? Hami. What else unique about them? You know, I think, the order of the chapters or surahs in the Quran is not exactly the order of revelation, right? Mm -hmm. You have Surah Al-Baqarah at the beginning. We said Surah Al-Baqarah is the first surah revealed in Medina al munawwar That means you have roughly more than 80 surah revealed before it, you know, and it was put at the beginning. About these surahs, from Zumar till the, this order is the same order of revelation. Okay, just to tell you about that chain, it's exactly it's a chain. The same way they were revealed, it's in the same order, one after another, in this consecutive way. This is, not to exaggerate, this is the opinion of most scholars, not all of them, them. when you go back to Itqan, you'll find in most of the narration that this surah has been revealed one after another, okay? There's some opinion against this, or but this is, when you read that chains, you find this is the weakest one, not, not the strong, strongest one. Okay. So this is the second point. That means they are in, in the same pattern, in the same order. The same way we have it in Quran is the same way it was revealed, which is not the case in all, uh, all surahs of Quran. Now, the third point I want to mention about them, we, we spoke about Mecca and Madani. No doubt these are Meccan surahs, all of them. But when you look at their structure, they are in the middle way between the Mecca and Madani surahs. In what way? And their verse is not that short like the Mecca, not that long that, like the Madan, okay? Their way of speaking, not that strong language that, like the uh, Mecca one, not the easy one like that. They are in the middle, okay? And as if they are in the core, you know, which is between the, the style that we have in Mecca and the style we have in Medina Budawa. And this is applicable also for all of them, including Surah al -Zubar. And also, the order of revelation includes all of them, in, uh, even Surah Al-Zumar. Why did I put Surah Al-Zumar with them? Now, be careful, don't misunderstand me. In our Mus'haf, this Surah starts by Tanzilu Al-Kitabi Min Allah Al-Aziz Al-Hakim. Yeah. 
This is the first verse. The same verse you have it as a star in this one and this one. The same exact verse. Hamim Tanziru Kitab Nallah Aziz al Hakim. Hamim Tanziru Kitab Nallah Aziz al Hakim. Even the surah after it, Surah Ghafir, you said Al Hakim, okay? You have it exactly the same except the last name was Min Allah Al Aziz Al Ali. Okay, yeah, and you have almost the same, not exactly the same. Okay. This is one reason why we joined Surah Zumar to them. The structure, we said the structure is between the Mecca and Madani. The second point, that they are in a consecutive way as a chain. The third point, that you have the same verse mentioned in some of these surah, namely Jazi and Ahqaf, and the uh, Rafir with one change instead of saying Al Hakim Al Alim. The last point, and that's what I don't want to, to misunderstand or get confused about. In Mus'haf Sayyidina Ubay ibn Ka'ab, Ubay ibn Ka'ab is a famous reciter of Quran. Rather, the Prophet said he is the most skillful one. He recited the Quran according to the Prophet. In his Mus'haf, not in our Mus'haf, you have Hamim at the beginning of Surah Al Zumar. Let's put it in dots, okay? And here in Mus'haf Sayyidina Ubay, you have Hamim. If you permit me, I'll call it Hidden Hamim, okay? Hidden Hamim. In our Mus'haf, we don't have Hamim. But in the Mus'haf of Sayyidina Ubay, Abu Ka'ab, you have Hamim at the start of Surah Al-Zumar. This is the one who is not familiar. This we call the seven letters, you know, in the Quran, we don't have time to explain it now, you know, but you should get familiar with it, you know, that you may have some differences, you know, even though this is not in our Mus'haf, we are not permitted today to recite Hamim at the beginning, but we put in mind that one Mus'haf of the famous companion, he had Hamim at the beginning of it. Yes? But I thought that the Quran, and it said that there is no doubt, no, it's not going to be different. It's not going to be changed. And uh, it's going to be different. No, no, still the same. Still the same. This is narration, and this is another version. When the Prophet was faced, you know, with these people, you know, he said, is this the way it was revealed? And when the other one recited, he said, this is the way it was revealed. Okay, and here, this, uh, both, both of them, they are narration or revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No doubt about it. For sure, now, we don't have it as a piece of knowledge as strong as our Mus'haf. Why? Because the strongest ever we have is Al-Mus'haf al rasmali that we recite nowadays, you know. About this, we have it as an idea. We are not quite sure about it. If, you, if this is what you mean, yes, you are right. But to say that this is contradict the truth of the Quran, no, this doesn't contradict it. Because this is another style, another way, another revelation. Another revelation. Yes? Uh, so let's say someone recites the, those, le those letters at the beginning. It's not permitted, no. This is haram. Okay. It's haram to be done. Okay, yes? I'm sorry, I did not get your question. A little bit louder. Is it it There's controversy about this point. I'm not going. Yeah, some uh, scholars nowadays they think that this is mansukh. Okay, we are right about it. But I, I'm not with this opinion. I'm not going to say why, you know, but uh, this is not my opinion, and many scholars, they don't have this opinion. But uh, to, to be honest with you, yes, some scholars, they said this is mansukh and it has been abrogated. Any question here? Um, it, you mentioned in, in the beginning that there, there were seven surahs that um, they, they appear in the Quran in a consecutive order, and it's the same order of revelation. Yes. Why did you make that point? I mean, to, 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 to explain now, I haven't explained, to explain that chain. Because when they are one after another, they look like a chain. 
and I'm going to explain this to you shortly. Yes. Uh, I was wondering, uh, as you said that each of the beginning of the Ahruf al they represent, although they may, like, like Bismillah ar rahim is different in each surah, and these different uh, Alif Lam Mim, Alif Lam Ra, they also represent different meanings based on their surah. I was wondering... But in the same time, they have something common. They have something common. Something common and something different. Okay. Yes. Right. So I was wondering, there are seven uh, Hawamim. I was wondering if they relate to the Hawamim of, uh, of the Hizb al-Bahr, because there are seven there too. Could yeah, uh, they no, they don't relate to Hizb al-Bahr. Hizb al-Bahr relate to them. I mean, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, sure. The Quran was revealed before, and Imam al-Shadi, he put yeah. that in Hizb al-Bahr. He took these Hawamim from here. So this seven. Okay. Okay. So it's the opposite way. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, a lot of us don't know what the, the Qur'an, we're not introduced to the Qur'an here, so... I yeah, I'm sorry, I just want to, يعني, if you don't understand it, forget it, you know, so just go by the previous three reasons that I gave, you know. The one who fully understand, because I, I'm not going now to spend a, lo a long time, you know, explaining about the seven uh, ahraf in the Holy Quran. Okay, Jazakallah. Uh, I don't think we have time, you know, for this. Other question? Okay. If you permit me to call it hidden hami, why it was hidden or in another way, in our mushaf it's not available, but we we know about it. But it's not available to you. Because the common meaning of hami is zuma, what is the common meaning about it? Goes about what meaning? Al ikhlas, sincerity. <laughs> Okay, this surah goes for ikhlas, for sincerity. Okay, and as you may know, sincerity is a hidden matter. If you are really sincere, you don't show your sincerity to the other, right? A person was praying, you know, and with a lot of humbleness, you know, and a person said, oh, mashallah, this is very good practitioner. And he tell him, he said, I'm fasting also. <laughs> <laughs> so you cannot have it in the same way, okay? Sincerity should be hidden. Okay? That's why Hamim it's it's hidden here. And this speak about ikhlas. The one who interested in fixing his ikhlas, he should uh, by understanding this is the best resource. You see, those of you who heard me, you know, frequently I try to refer anything to certain surah of the Quran. The one who wants to fix his aqidah, go to surah al-an'am. The one who wants to fix his ikhlas, go to this surah, okay? This surah is the best teacher for you to fix your ikhlas. Okay? If you want zikr, you go by the short surah al-ikhlas, surah qul wallah ahad, you make a, a repetition, you know, of it, 200, 1000, whatever you know of this. So here, the main meaning, Surah Al-Zumar goes our, around is sincerity. And that's why it ends by Zumar. What's Zumar groups? And we are going to be in the hereafter showing to each other according to our sincerity or our love. Okay? So the so the, we are going to be put, you know, or refined, you know, in different uh, uh, ranks, you know, according to our sincerity. This is going to be according to it in the hereafter. <coughs> And for sure, as ikhlas is too important to all aspects of our deeds, I think it's too important for this chain that I want to speak about. Any question about Surah Al-Zumar? Okay. Now we speak about Al-Hawami. start by letter, you are going to find that the Holy Quran, by the pattern of Quran, or by the word of Quran, or word of Kitab, mentioned in, in the, the verse right after the letters. This is not absolute rules. This is the 
general rules. Yani most of surahs in Quran, whenever they start by letters, you are going to find after them a phrase or a verse praising the Holy Quran, either by the word Quran or by the word Kitab. And in, in this group, in all of them, you have it by the word of Kitab, okay? Except in this surah, shura, it was Yuhi. We have some similarity, you know, between Revelation and the book itself, because our book is revealed, you know, to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Here it was, came in the pattern of reveal. Whereas, here you have the word kitab. In all of them, you have the word of kitab. And as I said, here you have it in Tanzeel Kitab in Allah Al-Aziz Al-Alim, Tanzeel Kitab in Allah Al-Aziz Al-Hakim, Tanzeel Kitab in Allah Al-Aziz Al-Hakim. Here you have it, well, Kitab Al-Mubin. In both surahs, in Surah Al-Zukhruf and Surah Al-Dukhan, we'll try to speak about them shortly, inshallah, later. Okay? So this, just to give you a look, that you have the description of the kitab or the word kitab mentioned in all of these surahs, you know, after Hadi. Here it's Kitanzilum min al Rahman al Rahim, Kitabu Fusilat Ayah. Five minutes. Okay. Al Rahman. Al Rahman. So we are left with five minutes? No. Okay. Any question? If you have important question, let's answer the question and stop here, you know. Otherwise, we may carry on for five more minutes. Okay. <coughs> The first surah, Surah Ghafir, speaks about what? The one who revealed the revelation. Who is? Allah. The one who want to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not absolutely, no. But from the side of revealing the revelation, and you are going to find many descriptions about Allah, many attributes, many names used. Uh, this surah to clarify for you certain points you know about Allah. But all of them, when you try to know more about Allah, look at, at it from the corner that Allah is the one who revealed. Okay, and uh, I should highlight that you have in three consecutive verse here in this surah, Rabb al-Alameen. Rabb al-Alameen, it was the end of a verse, another verse after it, third verse after it. What's the meaning of Rabb al-Alameen? We say Lord, but I don't see this يعني, word fit because a scholar in Arabic language, he said Rabb, it has 16 different meanings. And all these 16 different meaning, they fit when you describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who take good care of you, the one who raise you up, the one who give you ni'ada. Yani here, I'm sorry, I don't remember all those 16, you know, but here, perhaps the best word, the one who have the significant care about you. And here it's quite obvious, you see, you are Muslims, alhamdulillah. Just imagine you, yourself, without revelation, how you will be. You see how great is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to you? And by this you may taste some of the meaning of Rabb. How great is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with you, you know, when he... he how, how come I... How can I know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How can I speak about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How can I mention any idea about Allah? When you look at the others, you know, the way they speak about Allah or about their God, you get, you laugh, really. You, يعني, you don't accept it, you know, even though you have limited mind, but you look at them as if this is, doesn't make any sense. You know. And we are of limited mind, you know. How we have the ability to speak about Allah? 
Don't imagine it's this easy. No. Without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help, it's impossible. It's impossible to know anything about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See? And here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala joined it. Uh, by the way, the, the holy name Rabb, according to some scholars, never in the Quran, neither in the Sunnah mentioned alone. Usually it's connected to something. Rabbi, Rabbukum, Rabbu Samawat al Ad, Rabb al Alami. Okay? Yeah, you don't have it just as a name stand, you know, without connection or mudaf ilayhi, we call it in Arabic. Okay? And yeah, always we have connection for it. And this tells you very well, you know, yeah, it gives you a hint about the meaning of Rabb. And here when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Rabb al Alameen, the whole universe, okay, it means something, you know. And this explain to you what's the purpose behind revelation okay but here again if you want to know more about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this one of the best resource to know about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is going to tell you about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the side or from the view as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who revealed or gives the permission to start revelation okay. i think we should stop here Okay, you want to think about it, we'll return back, shall How many minutes? تسليم على سيدنا محمد الصادق الأمين المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا زدنا علما فقهنا إذا علمتنا اللهم انفعنا وارفعنا بالقرآن العظيم اللهم اجعله لنا نورا وإماما وهدى ورحمة by this we conclude the first subdivision group, you know, of the surahs of what we call Al-Masani. Any question about them or shall we move to the other subdivision? Yes? I heard about Surah Yasin that uh, it's, it's written and put in water, and the water is drank, but there is a uh, barakah in there. Is there anything about this? These are ways, you know, of getting barakah, yes. This is, uh, I'm trying to remember if there's any hadith in this regard. For sure this was done by the, some of the righteous people, even some of the companions. But uh, uh, what we know about recitation on water, but even this one to write and bring it. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, now I cannot remember any uh, strong you know, evidence from the Sunnah of Abu Tahara, but it has been done by many famous people, you know. This is not only for Surah yes. it may be applied to many of the verses of the Holy Quran or other adhkar in, in our uh, Islam. Other questions? Okay, we'll move to the next group or subdivision. It's the last group of Al-Masani before we move to Al-Mufassal. This contains 13 surahs. I'm going to speak firstly about two surahs of them, Surah Al-Safat and Surah al -Sad. Then we'll speak about the chain that I promised you to speak about. Firstly, let's speak about Surah Al-Safat and Sad. As I said before, Safat this is a pattern of speaking about the feminine plural in Arabic. Okay? Here it's used in the Quran in many areas, not all, but many areas, to speak about the angel, a certain groups of angels that they have certain tasks. Okay? And these tasks that assigned to these groups of angels has something related to either the meaning of the surah or something to help you to understand it. I was asked the question about Mu'aqibat, which means in Surah Al-Ra'ad, perhaps we were quick, you know, not, not speak a lot about Aqib and Uqba in Surah Al-Ra'ad. If you want this, uh, the root Ain, Qaf, Ba, Aqib has been repeated, uh, repeatedly mentioned in Surah Al-Ra'ad, perhaps eight times or, uh, or so. So we, we forgot to speak about it. Anyway, here we speak about 
This one of the famous surahs start by mentioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned a group of angels that have something related to the common meaning of the surah. Here Safat, what's mean? When you have something in a rose, okay? And the, even the angels, they have their role. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu one time, he, when he got out uh, to lead a prayer, he addressed the companion. Why you don't make roles similar, in the similar way that the angels, they make their roles? And even in one hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu said that this is one of the specialty of this nation. We don't have any other nation that they, when they pray, they pray in the roles similar to the role. Of, of those angels. Here, it may mean, again, besides these roles, as I mentioned yesterday, uh, today, about Surah Al-Hajj, that when the Prophet ﷺ spoke about this nation and the other nation, he said that the people of heaven, they are of 120 roles, 80 of this nation. And here, you may be speaking about the ranks and how the people is going to be uh, prior to others or have certain qualities, certain preference, you know, over others. Okay? Uh, for sure, in the human, when it's come to our mind, who are the, the most preferred people, you know, to look at? They are the messengers and the prophets. So that's why you expect in this surah to have long speaking, long talk about the messenger, the prophet. Okay, but from what, what, what side the talk is going to take this? And what view? Because we have many surahs speak about the prophets. What's about the specialty here? From what view? This is, in my opinion, is from the view how these prophets or messengers, they were tested in this life. They were tempted in this life and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved them, okay? That's why you have the word bala, which may mean test or disaster or some negative or unhappy event. In hadha lahwa bala ul okay? This word bala has been mentioned. And we should match it with what the Prophet sallallahu said, ashadukum bala, the most, among you that they are going to be tested, the prophets, and I, put it as a possibility, I don't have an evidence. Perhaps this hadith was taken from this particular surah, because this surah shows how those great noble people, you know, namely the messengers or the prophet, how they were tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here, it's highlighted from this point, you know, speaking about all of these messengers or from this point. And for some of them who are too special, it ended by saying, Salamun. Okay, because they need, need the security. They need to be in the peaceful pattern, you know. And this, uh, or in another way, they have been saved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, salamun ala Ibrahim, salamun ala Musa wa Harun, salamun ala Nuhi fil Alameen, salamun ala Il Yaseen. At the, at the end, not all of, of them, some of them they were mentioned as such, you know. Uh, <coughs> And at the end, the surah end by وَسَلَامٌ عَلَى الْمُرْسَلِينَ And those who were not mentioned, you know, in the surah, they have been all combined uh, at the end. Okay? So I speak about why this. Some of them, they were mentioned and other no. Or we don't have time. Let's go. Don't have time. Okay. Again here, I should highlight that in the surah again, uh, it's mentioned again at the, toward the end, وَإِنَّا لَنَحْنُ الصَّافُونَ And in the same pattern about Malaika, they speak the angels that we are as safoon that we have a rose. وَإِنَّا لَنَحْنُ الْمُسَبِّحُونَ Here, uh, as if give us a hint about the different quality of the angels, okay? And here, for sure, this high quality when we look at the human, the best among us two, these, these, ty these type of qualities, they are the prophet and the messengers. And when you look at them, you are going to find really that in their life, there are a lot of difficulties, a lot of hardship, you know, a lot of uh, tests, a lot of negative outcome. Uh, not negative, negative, even not outcome. And by this, we should learn 
about our life. When we look at this, we are going to be more pleased, you know, with our position, or rather more pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because He is the one who designated this for us. And when we know, I give one example about it. Sayyidah Aisha, when she described how was the last moments of the life of the Prophet وسلم, and how severe they used to be, she said, I don't hate anyone, uh, uh, any state when I observe a diseased person who is about to die and it was too severe on him because of the Prophet وسلم, it was too severe. Yeah, this is an example. Of Another example, one companion, when he entered to the Prophet وسلم, while he was sick, he Touch him and oh, the Rasulullah, as if you, you have the fever on double, you know, the, the, than what, what we suffer. And he said, Yes. He said, Because this you have the, the reward doubled. He said, Yes. Also, here you see how the, these great people, you know, they used to be tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life. And we should, whenever we recite Surah Safat, to look at this point. For sure, we don't seek bala from Allah because we are not capable, you know, of tolerating bala. We were still instructed by the Prophet وسلم, to ask Allah for afia. Afia doesn't mean cure or health only. Afia to be saved, you know, from all negative or harmful matters that you may get exposed to, the, to it in, 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 some, in, in your life. For example, when you have a very sick person, you know, and uh, uh, in very miserable position, you know, and make everyone ar around him, you know, get to really tired, and you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for afiyah for this person, maybe the afiyah too pass away. This is afiyah, okay? And to be saved, you know, of having much more uh, uh, difficulties, you know, or, or whatever. You, you, since you don't know, you cannot ask, specify to ask Allah to have to take him away. What do you ask? You ask for afia. So if this afia is to have him stay, you know, and he may be cured, this is going to be. I see. This is very broad meaning in Arabic. You know, may be used in different aspects in this regard. And the Prophet Sallallahu instructed us in particular, whenever we visit a, a patient or a, an ill person, to make dua seven times, you know, of Allah And he said, if, he, if it's not time to go, he, he'll be cured, you know, of this particular disease. Any question about Surah Al-Safat? Yes? Um, I, I'm just curious because you brought up the issue of uh, illness. Isn't it that the more a person suffers from illness, the more opportunity there is to remove from sins? So to ask for that person to, you know, move on to, you know, the next world, or aren't we depriving them of the chance then to have more sensory No, not, not at all, you know, because as you said, yani, uh, illness is to uh, take away some sins, you know, but we put in mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the ability of take away all sins without this way, you yani. You have this harsh way, you have other ways, you know. When I, uh, when anyone of us, you know, is uh, tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by this, he should think about it in this particular way. But to say there's no other way and we deprived him, no. No, we have many ways, you know, of this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is absolute and may take away the sin. In Allah yaghfiru zunuba jami'a, even without any reason or without any, uh, because he is not judged, he is not governed, you know, subhanahu wa ta'ala by these rules. We are judged by them. Even ourselves, even though we are judged by these rules, we are not instructed to ask Allah to make us sick, you know, or to be exposed to bala or whatever. No, this is not the, uh, the, the, the instruction that was given by the Prophet ﷺ. Rather, the Prophet ﷺ instructed us to ask Allah al afiyah not ask Allah al bala yeah. Other questions? Yes? I have the third ayah, I'd say, Fattaliyat, Zikrat, so is this about us? Allah SWT take oath who read Quran or angels? It sounds for me that this is a group of angels. And here three, I speak about three groups of angels. Safati, Safa, Fazajiyat, Zajra, Fattaliyat, Zikra. This is a group of the angels. I know that some scholars, they said uh, the angels, they don't have the ability to recite Quran. 
That's, that's why they are interested to uh, hear it from the human. Okay. So here, fatalyati dikra, if that statement, I'm not sure about it, if that statement is correct, that's me taliyati dikra, something else, not Quran. Other questions? Okay. So let's start. I gave a hint about it, you know, if you remember, we spoke about the Surah Alif Lam Mim started in Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in it Khalifa, namely Sayyidina, Sayyidina Adam, and anyone who followed the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, in Surah Al-Sad, Sayyidina Dawood was addressed as, Ya Dawood, inna ja'annaka Khalifa. And we have in the middle of Surah Al-A'raf speaking about Khulafa. This is ruler of Khalifa. Okay, so here uh, we mentioned at the Surah Al-Baqarah speak about the quality of Khalifa. What's the commands, what the prohibition that he should ap apply to his practice, to his personality, to, his, to himself, to be qualified as Khalifa. Here, Surah Al-Sad, not speaking about the quality of Khalifa, speak about examples. Okay, and this is one of the beauty of, about Quran. It's not only theory. Give examples, instruct yourself how to, to work for yourself to, to be one of those Khalifa. Okay. So here, uh, give us an example about the, our patterns about Khulafa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One was a king, the other one was sick one, the third one was friend of Allah, the fourth one was about to be slaughtered, you know, in this, you see, you have all different patterns, you know, of those Khulafa, you, you cannot Yani say that all Khulafa of Allah, they are going to sit on throne, you know, and govern and give this or that. You have so, this one, as one pattern, but we have the other patterns, you know, of those Khulafa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all those patterns, you know, they are symbols for us. Why? Because we have been instructed, or our Prophet was instructed to go according to their guidance and we follow the guidance of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So all those matters, they are simple, they are models for us to follow in our life and try to understand. Another way, whatever you are at, in any position, you have the ability to be one of those khulafa, regardless of your position. Always I give example about a woman Perhaps he, she was in the most miserable and most difficult position. She is the wife of Pharaoh. She is a wife of a person. Always say, Ana Rabbukum al -a'la. And she was successful, this woman, to be one of the best four women, women ever, as the Prophet said. When he counted the best four women, he said, Asiya, wa Maryam, wa Fatima, wa Khadija. See, so, yani he speak about, and ourselves, we tend to promise, if I am in different position, if I am this, if I am that, you know, I'm going to do it. Here, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned these patterns of khulafa, some of them he has very severe disease, the other one uh, was tested, you know, to be slaughtered, the third, you see, when you have all those, and you have some that you like, you know, but be sure that they, they don't like it the way you like it. You may like it for dunya side, you know, but they like it because they say, see the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on them. In one statement, I don't know how strong is it, that the Sayyidina Sulaiman was given the option to be given knowledge, money, or kingdom. And he chose to, to get the knowledge. And because of his good choice, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him money and kingdom. See? And here, uh, those people, even though they, they, they are busy, they got involved in uh, a matter that we like a lot, but I think in our hearts there's different intention that their heart, now, why they are interested in these matters. And from the apparent Side we may sound the same, you know, but we have significant difference in their inside their hearts and our hearts, you know, hearts when we <coughs> compare with each other. So here, whatever position you are at, you are going to find for yourself a similarity of one of those khalifa, which tells us that you have the ability to be one of those khulafa, and uh, it's only to. Uh, 
have open mind about it and try to work hard with pure heart and by this you are going to it ended by وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُتَكَلِّفِينَ This is one of the major point of being Khalifa. What's the meaning of mutakallif? The one who retained in different way than his nature. It's called mutakallif. This is exactly the opposite of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ said, the Muslim was asked, Please describe the Prophet ﷺ to us. She said, he was from the inner and outer the same. And he was instructed here in this particular surah to say, I am not one among those who takallif, who try to put, pretend. Why I should highlight this point? Because I see it, I may be wrong. All of us almost nowadays, we have a lot of masks. We try to behave, we try to pretend, we try to show ourselves as very good one, nice speaker, nice, nice uh, be behavior, or, or you name it. Whereas the Prophet was, uh, he used to go according to his nature. Okay. And by this, when you look at it you know, thoroughly, for sure you feel too comfortable to, to speak or to deal with a person who go by his nature, you know, without any pretenders, without any hypocrisy, without any matter of showing the others different than, uh, other than the reality, his reality. And on the other hand, you have a lot of problem to work or deal with uh, the person who has a lot of mass. And this, this perhaps, that's why we have very high rate of divorce. Why? Because the both sides, you know, they are going to show the best of them, you know, during the time of engagement. And all of these matters, you know, is going to be uncovered and the mask is going to drop down, you know. Okay? This is one of the experiences that we have. And we, all of us, without any exception, we are going to have a moment, you know, when all the, this mask is going to drop down. When? When we are about to die, at that critical moment, we are going to forget everything, and all of us we are going to go by by our nature. And uh, for sure, in the hereafter, again, as uh, we read in the hadith, in Allah subhanahu wa taala, Allah subhanahu wa taala, we read it in the, Allah subhanahu wa taala. Don't look to your body or to your pictures, shape. Allah subhanahu wa taala rather look to your hearts and deeds. Okay. So by this, whenever we Fix it in our self, we'll get closer to the tradition of the Prophet. Whenever we fail to do it, we are far away. Of it. And uh, I know about a famous wali uh, who said, uh, Whenever you meet with the companion, the major difference between us and the companion at this point. The companion, all of them, they used to be truthful and honest completely. Nowadays, we have it different, you know. And you have those masks, you know, I don't know how to get rid of our mask, you know, in this regard. So here, it has been highlighted. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned the hadith, أَنَا وَأَتْخِيَاءُ أُمَّةِ بُرَآءُ مِنَ التَّكَلُّفِ And we don't work in the way of takalluf. Takalluf, what it means, tafa'ala in Arabic language, whenever you do something with burden or with... Uh, Yani this is not uh, out of your nature. It's called tafa'ala, and takalluf is derived from it, from it whenever anyone works different than his nature. That's why the Prophet used to be, whenever he got happy, is going to be shining, his face shine a lot, you know, and this was well known to the old companion, and whenever he got angry, this is going to be shown in his face, you see? Our masks, you know, we are clever to cover when we are happy. Yeah, this is really a problem, you know, when I speak, when, I, when you speak with me and you don't know if I'm happy or angry or I'm pleased or not pleased with what you are, whatever you are. Yeah, really, this is a problem. And we feel it. We feel it. You, for sure, you are going to feel more relaxed, you know, when you deal with a person who is simple, 
his, by his own, by his nature, you know, without any complication. And we try, we should try to make ourselves as, as such. And a, a one scholar he said this, one of the major barriers of not seeing the Prophet in this life, in this life. Dream, to dream about the Prophet Sallallahu And one of the major barrier, barrier about it, when you, you have dif two different standards, inner and outside, they are not the same. The other major barrier, hub with dunya, love of dunya. Is it the color of the sun not the same? Almost, yes. If, if your inside is bad though, shouldn't you try to at least make your outside good so it changes the inside or sh like what do you mean have the inside and outside the same if your inside is bad it's a very good question you know uh, what I mean by it don't deceive people okay and you are not asked to show to people all bad matters about you about you okay but don't deceive people and we have this story that may sound crazy for someone, I don't know, but it's mentioned you know, in our books that a famous sheikh, famous sheikh, yani, uh, those who, of you who attended yesterday the class, you know, who sheikh of suluk, yani, he made people, you know, go in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of a sudden he told them, listen, my heart has been changed completely. I love so and so, this woman, and I'm not anymore sheikh. <laughs> and he closed his <laughs> his area and went. <laughs> after that, after a while, he said, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala retained my heart back. And he opened it, opened it, reopened again, and the student came and they said, that particular woman who was really very bad woman, you know, she came and attended his school and she became one of the great persons, you know. We don't know the wisdom behind it, you know, but what I'm trying to say, you will, all of you, you laugh at, at it. Okay, no problem. <laughs> but be honest with me, all of you. Do you have these feelings and changes in your heart or not? For sure, everybody. Why? Because even if you said no, the Prophet said that this, this heart is going to be that, like the boiling water. Okay? And in, in one day, you are going to find different feeling at different stages. So here, I'm not telling you to uncover yourself and tell the others you know, about your sins or whatever. No, this is not meant. But don't deceive people. Okay, don't pretend that you are well, a good man when you are, no, say, I'm no wrongdoer, and see, so, so you're, now I'm telling you, I'm wrongdoer, I'm a very bad person, you know, even though those people who brought me here, they saw that I'm good man, one, you know, and to speak, and I know how to phrase my word, you know, and put it, you know, but don't uh, trust, trust me at all, you know, I'm not the one to be trusted, I'm telling you now, okay, I'm not a good person, I'm of that category, okay, so I'm going to practice myself. Isn't also, Chief? Yes. Isn't there is a fine line between, like, Adam al takalluf and also Jabb al ghiba and al-Nafs? Like, يعني, the hadith, uh, when the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said, Allah, umri in Jabb al ghiba al-Nafs. What is it narrated this? I don't know. I don't know it's either. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, let me, let, uh, we, ha we have authentic hadith when the Prophet ﷺ protects the other to make riba of him, okay? When he said, inna safiya, okay? But what I'm trying to say, why I did, did say as such? Because we tend many times to protect ourselves, to defend ourselves, by this way, okay? I don't, want, I don't like this way, or I would like to say it, say it's a tricky way, okay? I'll say, I'm just to protect the other, you know, of Riba, I'm going to pretend and keep up in the same way. No, be honest with them. Tell them, I have, I have been good man, you know, for 30 years. Now my direction has been changed. Sorry, salamu alaikum. And that's good. A lot of, uh, a lot of don't go in details. Don't tell them anything about what your uh, problems. Yes. A lot of us teach in like Sunday schools and Saturday schools. How do you approach it for 
talking to like students and and you uh, we like Sunday school, Saturday school. They always tell us, I mean, we need we need teachers, and I mean, we're not ready to teach, or we're not, I mean, the material. But how do we how do we tell the students, I mean, that? Good question. Something? Always, you should judge us according to the uh, fuqh rule that we have. I have this very. I look at it as very nice rule. Ahwal al darre, the least harmful. Okay. And here you look how beneficial you are to this student and how bad you are, you know. And by this you may have the decision which one you should go by, okay? <coughs> Do you have a lot of people, you know, in the teaching field, in the Quran field, in the, you name it, who are really bad, bad, or the worst? Do you have it or not? Let's be honest with each other. Not only here, even in Syria we have. And we have stories, I feel ashamed to speak about them. Even of teacher of Quran, okay, I cannot speak about it, you know. But just I want to, not to accuse these people, no. I want you to be honest with yourself. Be truthful to yourself. And whenever you feel that you are more harmful to the other than beneficial, what we should, you should back off, okay? Back off. And don't worry, we have a lot of teachers, you know, we have a lot of teachers of Quran, and we love, and uh, uh, I'm sorry to tell you, you know, it's that not the point, you know, of have knowledgeable of Quran, or have knowledgeable in fuqah, or this or that. We should have with it the sincere person, you know. We, 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 we don't have a lot of them nowadays. And I told you about this joke, you know, so I repeat the joke, or? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. They said, you know, I, I heard it from one sheikh in Syria, he said, 20 years ago or 10 years ago, whenever one got, gets sick, could ask the other, please, do you have a religious physician for me to treat me, or a religious uh, engineer, you know, to, because I have a problem, or whatever. Nowadays, <laughs> this is his word, he said, nowadays, when we ask, please, do you have religious sheikh available? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Do we have to tell the students if uh, it's like someone uh, with a position, a teacher or something, the negative that he has it? No, at all. No, I did not. I, did not, I said no. You don't say, they tell them about your facts or about the sins or this or that. But I said what? Whenever he feels that he's not going to be beneficial for them, you know, and when he has some doubt, he should consult his friends, you know. Do you say, expect that I'm going to be beneficial to them or not? Whenever, whenever he feels that, he, let him be honest with himself. Whenever he feels, or the others, they feel about him that he's harmful, rather than arguing with them, you know, and take them to the court, look, let him look at himself. If he cause a lot of harm, back off. Find a different way. I'm not created to be teacher. I'm created to be slave to Allah. My business in this life, to attend my aim, my target. I'm slave of Allah. I'm not teacher, I'm not righteous, I'm not reciter, I'm not anything, okay? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put me in some position, if I am eligible, give me a benefit, that's it. But if I'm not eligible, no way, because I'm not created as such. This is not my original business. My original business to be slave of Allah. And whenever you have it fit, you go by it. That's it. Question then? Yes? If you have somebody, Yani, let's say Yani, the teaching the same exact thing, um, but the the inside of one person is is much better than the inside of the other. Does it have an effect on how the students Yani if if the words are the same, but the insides are different. Does it have an effect on the students overall? Yeah, I, mean, I little bit hesitant because I encourage people to teach. I encourage people to memorize Quran. And here we are going to be stuck, you know, between two matters, you know. But to tell you they are going to be the same, it's no way to be the same. Okay? And you have a person, you know, you, you remember even 
uh, about him, the way he used to eat or sleep, because this is going to uh, stimulate inside yourself something, you know, which make you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other one, even when you try to remember <coughs> reciting Quran, let's say, or prayer, is going to match with his love to dunya, let's say. Okay, so to tell that they are the same, I cannot tell you. Uh, it's very tough matter, you know, to discuss, but the best way to be in the safe side, always weigh the advantages and disadvantages. Okay, when you have the disadvantages much more or more, not much, more, that means stop. Okay, when you have the advantages more, keep doing it. And but you should know that you have problem. Oh yeah, Allah, I have a, a great problem. Remember all the time, أَتَأْمُرُونَ النَّاسَ بِالْبِرْوَةِ And those surahs and those ahadith speaking about those who guide the others. The Prophet ﷺ gave an example about them. And when the Prophet ﷺ gave this example, that means they are available or they are not? They are available. When they are available, is it a possibility that I am one of them? There's a high possibility. Okay. What example the Prophet ﷺ gave? About anyone speak good to people, you know, to instruct them, you know, in the way of Allah. And forgetting himself, he said he is like a candle, burning himself and give light to the others. Okay? And he is burned or gone already, no benefit. If we want to take the reality of burning himself, that means he is in hellfire, you know, and the other they were guided by his word and they entered the heaven. And this is in another hadith was mentioned by the Prophet We should know this. We should be familiar. This is one of our major problems nowadays. Okay? He said, the most miserable one in the hereafter, Ashqal Nas, Yawm al qiyama the one who gave a good word, made everyone enter the heaven, and he entered heaven. Is the most miserable one. Ashqal Nas. Let's be honest with ourselves. This is one of our disease nowadays. This is one of our problems. To try to cover it up is not going to help anyone. Okay? And I'm not going to speak you know, about the problems that I know about.